Hello and welcome to a priori story timeless. I'm here with a, with a story from Myanmar, previously known as Burma. That's why our tiger's with us. And with a crow. This is this crow's name is Bob. And she's here for the story too. Okay. <clears throat> So this uh, story includes uh, the character of a uh, Naga, uh, mythical dragon, guardian dragon, often found under the waters or under the earth. This is called the Naga, the sun and the crow. In a time long since gone, there was a Naga princess, a dragon princess whose domain was the bottom of a lake, a lake that nestled in the mountains of northern Burma. And sometimes the villagers would see the gleam of her silver scales as she skimmed near the surface on a sunlit day. Now this lovely silver dragon was young and curious, and much as she loved her watery home, she was curious about the humans who fished and washed in her waters. Finally, she felt bold enough to change into a human girl and go up to the surface, but she wasn't so bold that she would go near the villagers. Instead, she sat on the rocks and watched them at work and play at the lake's edge. And just as she was the lovely Naga, she was a beautiful maiden. So beautiful, in fact, that the son, who saw her each summer day, fell in love with her. And at last, he too, took human form. He changed himself into the guise of a strong hunter and entertained her by playing sweet notes on a bamboo flute. Love sprung between them and the son could barely pull himself from her arms in order to complete his circuit of the sky. The villagers complained loudly. They didn't like the fact that the sun left early in the evening and was late in coming in the morning. The complaints grew so loud that the sun said to his bride, I must go, but I will return and bide you, with you a time. There were tears in the princess's eyes and she hugged her swollen belly, but she bravely said, it is your duty. So I know you must go even if the days will be long without you. The son kissed her and called his helper, the white crow, to his arm. Yes. Crow will keep you company, her husband said. And when our children are born, he will carry the news to me. Their home was a lonely place, even with white crow to keep her company. And so the Naga princess returned to her dragon form and slipped back beneath her lake. The days passed, the months passed, and finally the princess pulled her sleek and silvery body out of the lake and left there on the lakeside three fine eggs. She called out to the waiting messenger and said, White Crow, tell my husband and your lord that his children have been born. I will, I will, called the crow. And he flew as fast as he could up to the sun. The sun was delighted and he chose the largest ruby he had to send to his wife. Take this to my bride, he told the messenger, and tell her to buy a kingdom for our children. Let them want for nothing when they hatch. I will, I will, answered the crow. And he took the silk bag in his beak for the long flight back to the earth. By the time he reached the earth, the crow was tired of carrying the heavy bag. And worse yet, he was hungry. But what he saw in the village was pleasant to his eyes. They were having a festival. The aroma of food reached his nostrils and the sound of music reached his ears. Surely he would be allowed to refresh himself here just for a moment. I mean, of course he could. The crow hung the silk bag in a tree and went off to steal some food and listen to the fine music. And when he was gone, a merchant snuck over to the tree. For the man 
knew that white crows were messengers of the spirits. The merchant snagged the silk bag from the tree and almost gave a shout of joy when he saw the ruby, but he clamped his mouth shut and pondered. Quickly, he found some dung and rocks and tied them up in the bag. Then he returned the bag to the tree. Night was falling when the crow remembered to return to the tree and he knew he had to hurry to deliver the ruby. He flew directly to where the Naga princess warmed her, e her eggs. For you, for you, he cried as he placed the bag near her. Great was the princess's joy as she opened the sack and great was her sorrow when she saw the insult. Without a word, she slipped back into the lake, leaving her eggs to chill in the night air. And great was the son's rage when he learned of the crow's neglect. As punishment, he scorched the bird black and swore that from then on all crows would be so. As for the eggs, some say that the mountain spirits took pity on the neglected eggs and asked the melting snows to wash the three into the great Itawadi. It's the great river of Myanmar. Of what became of the first egg, there's no dispute. It is said that it broke open in Mogok, spilling out rubies and other precious gems. Of the second egg, there is some debate. Some say that it broke in middle Burma and loosed a great tiger. While others say a young maiden stepped from it and later became queen of a now forgotten country. And there is a debate about the third egg. Of it, some say a giant crocodile slithered forth. Others argue that the future Prince of Salti stepped forth and was raised by a hermit. Thank you.